Hello everybody, welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we are playing a Green White Hate Bears meta killer company that user The Last God took to a 5-0 finish in an MTGO Modern League. We played against The Last God in a recent gameplay video, and I've known The Last God for a long time. They hang around our stream, around my buddy Avaro's stream, Fluffy Wolf's stream. He's a homie, and I'm not playing this deck just because he's a homie. I saw this when I was scrolling through lists, and it actually looked like a really cool list that was right up my alley, because these these are the kinds of decks that I play in IRL because I'm a Celestia loyalist and I love playing taxes. It's not exactly hate bears, but it's hate. There's lots of hate. The main one I'm pointing out is uh, one of the best new hate pieces, Archon of Emiria, that just came out as Endicar Rising. This thing is an incredible hate piece and a brand new staple of taxes in general. This thing, it's an evasive threat that you can Coco into that makes it so People can only cast one spell per turn, so it's like a deafening silence on a stick, and that's amazing on its own, but also makes lands enter tapped. So it slows your opponent down like crazy, which is what Taxes is trying to do. So it's perfect. It's just absolutely perfect. And that both of these abilities are great against the current modern meta, because the meta is spammed with Titan. So making the lands enter tapped really slows them down. And the meta is absolutely spam with shadow burn and like Scourge of the Skyclave decks in general. And making them only cast one spell per turn really cripples them. So this is just an incredible card. And um, we even, speaking of hating out the current meta, we even have main deck, Ariok Champions and even Burnt and Forge Tenders. Um, having that protection from black and red and gaining life whenever creatures enter is just amazing against all the red blitz and, and death shadow decks. And it really stops them in their paths. They have no way to kill it. And you just stabilize yourself like crazy. Cocoing into a couple of these is going to be great right now. And speaking of hating out those kinds of decks, if we go up against the more Jun based shadow deck or Grixis, I mean, not really Grixis, but Jun. And we got main deck Mirren Crusader as well, just to give us even more ways to hate out those things in the main deck with protection from black and green, making it so their fatal pushes can't really kill us, and we can block their shadows and scourge of the sky claves for days. And it, the deck's just got a really strong core. Coco's incredibly power against control, being able to play at instant speed. We got the Stone Blade core as well. And uh, we even have a new great uh, removal piece in Skyclave Apparition from Zendikar Rising as well, in addition to already having Path to Exiles. So it's a way we can continue to beat down with creatures, but also have even more removal, which is something that these kinds of decks always lacked. In the past, it was just the set of paths, maybe one Dramoka's Command from time to time, and that was it. But now Scourge of the Skyclaves is awesome. Being able to just exile a permanent straight up and then like when they kill it, they get a thing back equal to its CMC. But for example, if it was like a 9-9 Death Shadow, they're just going to get a 1-1 one, one back when they kill this thing. <laughs> like if you kill like a giant token, they get nothing back. It's it's really good for just dealing with anything on board. Uh, the deck seems powerful. I'm super excited for it because I'm a Celestia Loyalist, so let's give it a try. And shout outs to our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. If you'd like to try today's deck out in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That's our TCG Player link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. It is the number one place on the internet to buy Magic the Gathering singles. And if you want to try today's deck out on Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck and play along with us. They're the most trusted and reliable Magic Online card rental service, the best way to play all the MTGO you want. It is what I personally use and how I do so much MTGO content for YouTube. And shout outs to our supporters over on Patreon, their names have been scrolling down below. It is because of you guys' this channel is possible, so thank you very much for your support. If you would like to become a patron as well, link is down below and with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, we're live here on Twitch Gutter Deck, freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. This is Green White Meta Killer Company. So we went over basically everything in the intro. Like we got the Stoneblade package. We even got the new Mall of the Skyclaves, which people have been running. It's a card that seems underwhelming when you read it, but plays better than it looks. Because one of my favorite cards is Angelic Destiny. It just gives flying and big old buff. And this thing is like a reusable half of a angelic destiny flying in first strike auto equips for three so it's like a good aura but then the thing is it's not an aura so if your creature ends up dying then you just get to reuse this thing and make another threat insane uh we got one single set of the wreckage main deck just in case for those go wide decks 
And then we got paths for removal, American Force Center, Nobles are ramp, and yeah, we basically went over everything else in the intro. Um, Night of Autumn is a way to like also gain life in the main deck against Blitz and Burn, and also destroy an artifact or enchantment in case we're going up against that, because like again, options, meta killer. Speaking of meta killers, in the sideboard we got Kozilek and Ulamog, because Mill is very much a thing right now because of the new Ruin Crab. A lot of people love to play Mill at the moment, so this is a way to just shuffle in when they try to mill us. We got some more swords for the situation when it calls for it, in case we're going up against those colors. Veil of Summer for anti-counter spells and Thoughtseize. Damping Sphere for anti-Titan and combo. Another Settle, just in case we're going against another go-wide deck. Rip for the Grave. Lane and Arbiter for fetchy decks. And another Burnt and Forge Tender, in case we need Pro Red. And uh, that is about it. And with that, we're ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Jankiness, who we played against in the last video. We won the die roll, gonna be on the play here with some meta killer company. That looks decent. I, I assume that every hand with this deck is gonna look decent because it's just a, a scattering of good cards. Hey, Crooked Sporks. All this talking about good basics made me go fix my own lands. Yeah, you never wanna queue up with bad basics. You gotta get the good stuff like this. Gotta get the goods. Can never go wrong with unhinged basics. However, there's some basics I do like more than others. All right, we were on the play. That's good. So we can get out the stone forge ahead of time. All right, so they're on Stompy. So Batter Skull is going to be great here. Ooh, that's a Coco. Let's go for Batter Skull. We gotta get our lifelink action going. All right, Batter Skull, goo. And I got double canopy, so I'm gonna be taking a little bit of self pain. What do you call that? Sadistic, masochistic? I don't know the difference. Some people call me sadistic for liking hot sauce. Ooh, Skyclave. That's actually really good here. Um, but you know what? We're just gonna flash in the Batter Skull. If they would like to uh, keep their guy alive by using an Aspect of Hydra, I'm cool with that because Aspect of Hydra is one of those cards where it's like it can just win out of nowhere unexpectedly and i'd like to get that trick out of the way early rather than later i'm still gonna gain life in the process all right so let's do the thing batter skull see if they got a dismember for that because sometimes they run, run main deck dismember let's block dried militant Oh, Vines of Vastwood. They get to keep their guy alive, but I still gain four life and they used one of their tricks. So that's fine. And then I'm going to have enough mana to equip the Batter Skull soon. Ooh. I'm going to use a Stoneforge Mystic to trade with the Dried Militant and then I'll just hold up Coco here. This deck is so fun. I, I really miss green white mid range. It's just, it's what I only play IRL. So it's like, I miss it so much. This is my specialty right here. This is my bread and butter. I love this. All right, Coco. Give me Ariok champion, Burnton Forge tender. Unfortunately, we're not going up against red aggro, but still. Always yes, always yield. Um, let us block Dryad there, and let's just take the two from Strangler Root. I'm going to remove Strangler Root with Skyclave. See if they got a, oh, they got a Scooz. That's a big boy. Okay, I think I might remove Scooz. That guy's more of the issue. Archon of Amiria is awesome. Um, however, I think I'm just going to go for equipping Batter Skull. 
Do I do that or do I go for... I think... Oh, I don't know, dude. Yeah, let's... Yeah. Let's equip Batter Skull. Because it makes better use of the mana, because next turn I'll be able to go 3-drop, three 3-drop, three drop, so it's going to make it better. Apparition is a feels bad for them. I know because it, like, ruins the Undying on their Strangler Geist. And I can nerf a Strangler, uh, I can nerf a Steel Leaf into a 3-3 three three if they manage to kill my Skyclave Apparition. Yeah, they scoop it up. Too big for them. Alright, side broad. Um, we definitely want a second settle. Bring the second settle. And, uh... That's probably it. Sword of Fire and Ice can kill stuff, but a little too situational. Um, Burnt and Forge Tender is not good here. So, if I can cut both of these, what would I rather bring in? Probably Sword of Fire and Ice. I could also bring in Arbiter just to be a, something to trade. Light and Shadow can gain me life. Yeah, let's just go Sword of Fire nice and settle. On the draw, this is going to be terrifying. I do see one thing I don't like about this deck, and that's the curve. I think it needs more one drops. I would definitely add at least a couple birds. Um... Sure. Keep that. Mirror and Crusader is going to be nice here. Like, effing nice. Uh, although the problem is that we're on the draw and that he is going to make me take pain off Canopy and that we're a little slow at the moment. Experiment Juan. Ooh, Night of Autumn. That can gone me some leaf. Strangler Geist. Jay, did you get any Sona art made? Go an FA and make a profile and get a commission? I want to see Jade Dragon. Alright, let's play Boulder Loft Pathway. And go Stone Frog. Get Batter Skull. I wish I'd top deck a path. Path would be great. Yeah. Mirror Crusader is such an MVP versus Mono Green. It's not even funny. You lost too many games to it. Same. Um. I think I'm gonna take it. I wanna save my, my stone forge to like cheat in the batter skull the following turn after this. Ooh, that's a path. Change of plans. I think we're just gonna go batter skull plus path something. They could have vines of vastwood, and they definitely will. But I feel like despite the fact I'm not using my mana as efficiently if I do it this way that I think I have a better chance of I think I have a better chance doing it this way. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. If they have vines plus aspect, they I'll be at eleven and then this will hit me for ten. Eleven that's exaxes. But I can block there. Block there. Let me for 10. Yeah, yeah, I can live. So I'm just going to go Mirror and Crusader.
steel leaf champagne okay i can uh i can pass that for sure i'd hate to give them more mana but i kind of want to path it now before they have the chance to untap and protect it um let's block the strangler or the experiment one get them to regenerate it yep they're gonna regenerate it all right let's start by main phase pathing steel leaf so that they don't have the chance to vines it and then now i think i'm gonna flash in the batter skull Tracks Waterlog Groove. I just realized how much of a savior of these decks that Boulder Loft, Branch Loft is. Because these decks don't want to fetch and they don't want to be too pained. Like, that's amazing. I just thought about that. The Green White Lean and Arbiter decks are just absolutely, this is MVP. All right. We're going batter sclay. Yeet. You can imagine a dragon covered in green scales. Or slightly translucent and changed in shades of green. Oh yeah, that'd be cool, like a chameleon dragon. There's members on the germ. They're giving me the chance of lethal. Let's block. Pell Collector. Do they have double vines? Or double aspect to Hydra? Because this isn't lethal. That brings me to one. I need a land that doesn't pain me. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's go Night of Autumn. And let's gain four life. Uh, do I attack here? I think the answer is no. I think I stay back more. Until next turn, I can equip the Batter Skulls of Mirror and Crusader and just totally just destroy this game. Like, it's going to be over. So over once I equip Batter Skull to the Double Striker that's pro green. Like, it's going to be insane. I can't risk it right now. They have no way to give Trample. Like, Aspect of Hydra, Vines of Vastwood, they both don't give Trample. I think, actually, Vines might. I don't remember. It's been a while since I played Monogreen Stompy. But I've played Monogreen Stompy a lot on the channel. It's one of the decks I most often played on the channel. I don't think Vines gives Trample. All right, yeah. Batter Skull equip here. And, yeah, totally punch them in the face. This is maximum disrespect right here. Absolutely over. It's so incredibly over. <laughs> All right, it looks like we're taking down Monogreen Stompy. Yo, anti-meta. The, just the main deck anti-mono-green card right there. <laughs> with Mirror Crusader, that's hilarious. And then even with the new Skyclave Apparition giving us eight main deck removal options... For decks like that, it's just so good. Got a game here against Kai Guy. And we won the die roll. Gonna be on the play here with some anti-meta company. That looks good. Let's keep it. So yeah, out of all video games, I think that Pokemon would be the most desirable world to live in. Although at the same time, it's gotta be hecka dangerous because of there's some mons that are just like I would imagine that in the Pokemon world. There's got to be a lot of forest fires. So many forest fires. A slugma just crawls out of its cave. And boom. The whole world's burned down. Like, if you have, like, a Chimchar just running in the forest, catching stuff on fire. I, am, I imagine, though, that the vegetation in the Pokemon world has kind of evolved over the years to be kind of resistant to combustion. 
Because otherwise, the whole world would burn down. So, yeah. Either that, or there's very responsible water types in the area that keep everything under control. So if there's a fire, you got plenty of water types. So, yeah, basically, if there's a forest fire, you have a, a million firefighters at, like, working on it. Because there's a million water types, you know? So, yeah, I, I feel like it's pretty safe. Silvergill Adept. Um, do we want to trade off our Aria Champion? Okay, let's offer the trade. Because that'd be cool with this trade. Uh, let's just go Knight of Autumn here. Or do I want to go Archon of Emeria? Let's just go Knight of Autumn. I don't feel like I want to go Archon of Emeria yet. Because, um... I, they're not going to play two spells next turn. You can just tell. They're only going to play one two drop. Because if they had a one drop, they would have played it on the first turn. If they're going to play two spells, that means they top that one drop, which is lesser likely. The ghost Pokemon Pokedex entries keep away from wanting to live in the Pokemon world. So the ghost types are not going to bother you unless you, like, intrude on their territory, pretty much. Ooh, Coco. Change of plans. Let's just go in with Night of Autumn, because they're probably going to flash in a Merfolk Trickster. If I swing with our champion. Um, okay, let's let's Coco on their end step or on their turn, because if, if we do it now, they can potentially force a negation. See, there's the trickster. Taps down the Aria champion, but we still get to gain a life. You would want to live in a post-scarcity society. So that means when everything's abundant and everything's just like... You got everything, like... So basically, what Christian's vision of heaven is, is what you want to live in. Don't some... Don't some just come into your house and steal your soul? Are you talking about ghost types? Like, I don't think there's ghost types in neighborhoods. Like, because, like, the thing is, in the Pokemon world, you can see ghosts. Now, they can go invisible if they want to, but, like, you can see them, and your special type moves will be able to hit them. So you can get rid of them. Maybe if you have, like, a cleric Pokemon, like an Audino, or Audino, you'll be able to deal with the ghost types. And I feel like a lot of households in the Pokemon world probably have Audinos because they're they're probably really good like maids too. And they're also healers. And they just overall love helping. Oh, I should have Coco on combat. Yeah, I could have blocked some things. But I was like reading chat, my mistake. Alright, Knight of Autumn, Skyclave Apparition. And let's deal with this, um, with this untapped Silvergill Adept. Let's put some counters on here. Let's not worry about Aether Vial. So right here, I'm just going to go to combat and attack with all. And then... Put in Archon of Emeria, second main phase. We're gonna flash in another Merfolk Trickster. Alright, tapping down one of the knights. Um. Yeah, I think I still. Get him with everything and, and path the trickster. 
Like, I'm going for a race here. I'm in a racing situation. They could force a negation and eat my Aria champion, but then they're just losing a bunch of value. So, um, Skyclave Apparitioning, the Aether Vial is kind of irrelevant at this point because of how much mana they have access to now. So, I think I just Skyclave and get rid of one of their blockers. Either that or I Archon of Emeria, which just kind of doesn't really do anything at this point in the game. I think we just... You know what, let's Archon, because next turn I can use the Skyclave to deal with the blocker. And let's leave up this Ghost Quarter to be able to hit the Muta Vault. Seems like a Gucci idea. Now they can only cast one spell. So if they cast one spell, I don't have to worry about any shenanigans happening. Uh, people in the Pokemon, people in the Pokemon world are used to Pokemon being around. They are just animals after all. They are not just, well, everyone's animals. Humans are animals. And Pokemon, some Pokemon are way more intelligent than humans are. Like, way more. Like, psychic types and all. Like, Abra and Kadabra and Alakazam, they, their IQs, like, when they're even young, they're, they have a much higher IQ than, than humans do. And I would imagine moms like Pat, uh, like um, or Oren Guru probably do as well. Like even when they're young, like psychic types in general. Glass pool mimic. Their one spell for turn copying. Merfolk trickster. Okay, I'm just going to freely just Ghost Quarter Mute of all here. They can't cast another spell, so... Oh, wait, I just gave them an extra mana. Uh-oh. So they can... Because they're going to tap down the Archon of Emeria, and it's going to lose its ability so they can cast another spell. And I might have just allowed them to cast uh, their 4-drop dude right now, which is going to be a problem. Yeah, but I feel like if they had that guy, they would have just... Brought in the Mervo Trickster, or the Glass Pool Mimic off the vault. Yeah, I screwed that up. Yeah, I totally screwed that up. That was a huge misplay. That was probably one of the biggest misplays of my life right there. Alright, Spreading Seas on there. Yeah, I just allowed them to play an extra spell is what I did with that Ghost Quarter. I should have waited until combat. I felt like there was no downside to just doing it there because they can only cast one spell, but then I realized, oh wait, they're targeting my Archon. They're all tapped out, so I feel like I should still be able to get this. Field of Ruin, Skyclave Apparition, not going to worry about Field of Ruining right now. And deal with their Lord and just get him with everything. They can eat the Ariok if they want. If they do, they're probably dying. Oh wait, they can trade with the Skyclave. I forgot I had the Skyclave too. <laughs> Man, I am not paying attention. Eats that. So they're gonna go to two and get a two-two blocker. But then I'm gonna have lethal in the air. Yeah, they just scooped it up. All right, thank goodness. Because I botched that game so hardcore. All right, I was distracted. All right, let's do this again. So bring and settle and cut burnt and forge tender. And I have an extra slot, so bring in sword of fire and ice. Cut and bur cutting burnt and forge tender. And I don't need veil of summer. Let's run it like that. Every time you see Coco post Modern Horizons, you think about how cool Collected Conjuring could have been. 
It, it was cool, but people stopped playing it. People are cocoing into um, the rhinos and stuff, like cocoing into like crashing footfalls plus ancestral vision, stuff like that. And people were also doing Ponza, so they'd cocoa into like Molten Rain, Stone Rain. Pika can do Bolt that is three damage and one. Okay, well, Pikachu is a little rare. Not everybody's gonna have a Pikachu in the Pokemon world. As a matter of fact, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't want a Pikachu, seeing as how if a Pikachu gets defiant, it's gonna probably like shock you and give you a heart attack. So, especially old people wouldn't want that. I mean, I imagine a lot of people, if you're talking about as pets, would probably keep normal types, you know, like Stoutlins and, and like, you know, starter, starter rats, starter rodents. Yeah, Growlithe's too. Arcanines are, are, um, are very, they're known to be very loyal. They're probably the most loyal Pokemon. So if you want a loyal companion to just like be a guardian for you, Arcanines are big. Like they're, they're like, even though they're standing on four legs and like they're quadrupeds, they like stand up, their back is as tall as you are. And, um, yeah, so they're big and they're loyal. So yeah, if you're, if you're ever in the Pokemon world one day, and you want a very trustworthy companion, go with the Growlithe and train him up into an Arcanine. All right, we're gonna start on Stonefrog. Officer Jenny. Hey, handsome. Yeah, Pox, what it was. You would want a Gyarados, my favorite Pokemon. See, now that is the that is the answer, Jagmon, that that people would get triggered at. You don't want a Gyarados. Okay? I'm gonna tell you why. You're at home, you're chilling, you wanna hang out with your Pokemon. What are you gonna do with a 30-foot sea serpent in your bedroom? You're not gonna hang out and chill and play video games with the 30-foot sea serpent. I, I doubt any Pokemon trainer would even have a Gyarados, unless they're an Elite Four member. Fly on it? Well, they don't fly. Gyaradoses bounce. They bounce up really high and they'll come right back down. But they don't fly. They're flying types. That's because they can jump out of the water like that. They can jump out and they fly for a bit but they bounce, they don't fly. They spreading seeds in my template garden. All right, well, I'm immediately going to deal with that Aether Vial before it does a million annoying things, which it's already gonna do one annoying thing. All right, blow up Aether Vial. Forest hump. And bed now might need to duck out soon. I got a duck right here. This is my boy creature. See this duck? That's my boy creature. Ducklet would probably be a mon that would hang out in the pool in your backyard. You'd have to go out and bring him bread or he's gonna spray you with water. Um, but yeah, Ducklet's a cool mon. All right, what are we doing here? I think I go Stoneforge. Maybe. So that I can like go Batter Skull plus something else next turn. But I don't have another colored source of mana. All right, I think I go, I think I go Sword of Fire nice here. So the next turn I can equip it, swing, shoot something down.
Because sword can be very annoying here. Hope they don't have another dismember. Another lord. So that's going to stop my sword value. I'm going to need to draw a path or something. No path. All right, so let's equip sword. And attack for four. Deal two to them. Draw a card. Play a ghost quarter. And play a knight of autumn as a four three. And then that'll give me lethal. All right, let's do it. Put two counters. That's exactly 10 damage, so I'm forcing their move. Don't you dare have a master of waves. A master of huevos. Officer Jenny would be your loyal companion? Why? What, what, doesn't Officer Jenny have an Arcanine? It's another lore. They're getting in for eight. All right, what do? What do? I can get in with both and force them to block with Silvergill Adept and trade for my knight. And they'll have eight on the backswing. Um, what I should have done is probably ghost quarter my own land and then Knight of Autumn the other spreading seas so they don't get unblockable. So I probably screwed that up. Yeah, so I think I might have lost. Let me see if I draw a path. Yo, wait. That's a mall. That's, yo, that's game. That is game. I put it on this guy and I just get him for unblockable. Oh, they're going to be so sad. They're going to be so sad. The most clutch mall of the sky claims in the world. Oh my goodness. Perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Oh, take that, Merfolk. Take that, Nikachu. Not so fast, Nikachu. <laughs> Not so fast. Yo. They're so mad, I can tell. They slammed their keyboard so hard right now. <laughs> the mall. The mall for the lethal. The mall is like, it doesn't look like a good card, but it's just such a clutch card because it can get you in evasively and bigger. Oh, man. So we took down Merfolk. That was sick. All right, we got a game here against It's Nicholas, who we played against in the last video, and I don't remember exactly what they were on, but I'm sure we'll know soon enough. Uh, this hand looks good. Let's keep it because any any hand that has a turn two stone for just fine enough. Okay, so this is goblins. Wait, I don't remember them playing this. Hopefully I draw a white source so I can get out Ariok. I hope they're just goblin aggro and not goblin combo. Because that would make it a lot more bearable. GG. What's so funny is I own both paper both decks and paper. Well hate bears. The thing is, this isn't Hate Bears. It, this deck has no bears except the Arbiter in the board. Hate Bears is like Thalia, Arbiter, like that kind of strategy. But this is just Green White Hate Company. Oh, yo. We got the second white source. We can do it. Although, I think I'd still want to go Stoneforge here. Get the Batter Skull. Because it looks like they're maybe on Goblin Combo. They're going to flash in Munitions Expert for sure. They're going to kill the Stone Frog. I'm still going to get Batter Skull because it looks like I'm going to be able to hard cast it here.
What's gin and tonic? I've heard that word before. I know tonics from video games. It's like a potion. They got the Snoop. All right, Razor Verge, Thicket, Archon. It's an alcohol beverage. Well, yeah, I know that, but tonic is a potion, right? Isn't it a synonym for potion? Not quite sure. My mom would know, because my mom's a literal witch. My mom's very much into potion. She's like a really dark person. She used to like draw very like, very well, but like really dark stuff. She was a really good artist. But she hasn't spoken to me in many years. I wonder how she is now. I wonder if she lost her beauty queen ways and I wonder if she's ugly now. <laughs> All right, um, wait, how did they play Rune Goblin Ringleader there? Doesn't this say their lands under tap non-basics? Did they just play a basic? All right, um, let's go Sword of Feast and Famine here so that next turn we can, like, play it, or, like, equip it and attack and then play Batterskull and Aria Champion. We can just dump our hand next turn. Another ringleader. Wait, what did they reveal? Do they have... They don't have their common piece yet. They got double Wily Goblin. They got triple Wily Goblin. That's all they got. Just triple Wily Goblin. Anti's Hovel enters tapped. All right, um, let's go white, white, Arya champion, forest. Oh, I can only cast one spell. I forgot about that. They're going to discard a card, but at least I got pro, pro red here, so this can block pretty well. And they're going to get chunked. And I can leave with the threat of Coco. Gin is some kind of British juniper. Vodka. And tonic is, was an anti-malaria mixture with chinine. So you are almost true. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I mean, I, I'm not an alcohol drinker. Like I said, the only time I, I only had alcohol in my mouth twice. Once was making out with a dude who was drinking. And then the second time was uh, eating a chocolate that I didn't know had tequila in it. And I spit it out and didn't eat it. But yeah, it was tequila chocolate. <gasps> Settle the rockage. Heck yeah. All right, um, let's go to combat. No, I was supposed to play the batter skull first. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I shouldn't have done that. I, I like, I was reading chat. I was talking to chat, just wasn't like thinking and looking. <laughs> that was my bad. But at least I can settle the wreckage now. Oh no, they got the bogart on top, dude.
Yep, that's game. So we still we still didn't get that one anyways. But yeah, I gotta I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing, which I never do when I'm streaming, by the way. It's easier to do when you're not streaming and commentating and have a really bright light in your face. Alright, um So we want Sword of Fire Nice. And we want I mean Veil of Summer can save us for one turn, but actually no, because they can hit us with red. No 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 no. They can hit us with because the uh, sling gang is black, but I think it says each, so it doesn't target. Um settle we don't really need. Yeah, settle's not really needed here, I don't think. I think we can cut that. Settle's not really what we what we want. And Mirror and Crusader's fine is just a beater, I guess. Let's just run it like this. Jade loves alcohol. Dude, you're only 22. I'd expect you to love alcohol when you're 40. All right. Um, that's going to be a mulligan. We don't have green. This is going to be a keep, I guess. And let's throw away... I don't know, probably Coco. I like the spells that I got. And Coco's RNG. That could literally be a dead card. Whereas I like these cards. Because I want to equip the Sword of Feast and Famine to the Mirror and Crusader. Can still be chumped by red dudes, which is annoying, but still. Please, no munitions expert. That would kill us. No, they revealed munitions expert. That sucks. All right, I feel like if I don't draw a land, I'm going to scoop here. Yeah, I don't. I'm not going to play this out if I don't draw a land off the top. Yeah, I'm going to scoop it up now. GG. Goblins takes us down. I don't think... I think we've beaten Goblins one time on the channel, but this new, like, Goblins combo deck that's been going around for the past couple months is absolutely insane and diff really difficult to beat. And, uh, yeah, like, when, when we played it, it was one of the funnest, most best-feeling decks because it was so solid. And uh, we have a really difficult time beating it. So, yeah, takes us down again. Got a game here against one manly nurse, and we're going to be on the draw here with some green white meta killer company. And this is a fine three and a four. It doesn't have anything to do early, and that's the one thing I don't like about this list is that it doesn't have very many early plays. And I usually like my curve to be like around 10 to 12 one drops, and then like around eight ish two drops, seven or eight two drops, and then like a bunch of three drops, and then Coco's. And then, like, Path the Exiles. So, like, you can add on to the one draws with Path the Exiles. Um, all right. Razor Verge, Sprocket, go. Goblin Motivator. What is happening? <laughs> I'm going to F6. I'm not going to pretend like I got a path. You've only gotten drunk once during your four years of drinking, and you, were, you was never sick. Wait. Four years of drinking, but you're 22 years old. So you must not live in the U.S., because in the U.S., you got to be 21 to drink. All right, War and Instigator, and they didn't destroy us there, so I'm happy about that because when War and Instigator hits you, usually it's over. They usually cheat in like Siege Gang Commanders and stuff like that, so very glad they didn't do that. <laughs> Let's see if they put in a couple Siege, Siege, whatever they're called. Nothing. Wow, I am surprised. Genuinely surprised. All right, let's get out Mr. Mirren Crusader. So they can actually trade War and Instigator for Mirren Crusader here. More Gobbos. Bolt. Tarfire. Lava. Wait. Freeman and Captain is not a Goblin? 
Oh, there is this just like cheat in tribal? Are they just trying to cheat stuff in? Why do they have lava axe too? Are they trying to like they have black? Are they unearthing? Mardu, they're trying to cheat in Captain of the Watch or something. I'm thoroughly confused. All right, planes go. We'll leave up Coco. No, no, it's 101 NC. This is nowhere near 8 whack. This is Mardu cheat stuff in tribal because Premen and Captain and Warren Instigator are trying to cheat stuff in. Settle the wreckage would be an all star in this match. Give me a uh, Burnton Forge Tender and a Skyclave Apparition. Because pro red is more relevant than pro black and green here. Um, let's take away this here scary award instigator before they draw like a goblin goliath or something. Try to attempt to block both of these. Freeman and Captain is spooky. I kind of want to just Coco again to hit another Skyclave in fear of what that's going to do to me. But you know what? I think... I think I'm going to go Mace of the Skyclaves. Oh no, I could have went Sword of Feast and Famine. Mace of the Skyclaves on Burnt and Force Shunder because this guy's got pro red. And then let's go Stoneforge to get Batter Skull. Probably a questionable turn, but I I need to make sure that I have a blocker for this guy before I choose a captain of the watch. No attacks, good. All right, uh, I have no evasive. Oh, this guy's got flying, so let's go sword of feast and famine, and equip it to burnt and forge tender. And attack. I really wish Skyclave Apparition had flying. He'd be nuts if he had flying. Yeah, they scoop it up. All right, so cheat stuff in tribal. Give me the settle of the wreckage right now because I'm gonna need to kill Captain of the Watches and Siege Game Commanders and Goblin Goliaths. And then I, I assume they're going to have a bunch of fetches because they're Mardu and they're very low to the ground. But we didn't see any fetches, but Arbiter seems legit. I think, we're, okay, Sword of Light and Shadow is good. Or uh, Fire and Ice, rather. So let's bring in this. I want to keep in the Arya Champion and the Burnt and Forge Tender. Mirren Crusader doesn't really help much in this situation. And Knight of Autumn could give some kind of tech because we don't know what they're doing. Um, let's just cut one Night of Autumn, one Mirror and Crusader, and run it like this. Second Forge Tender. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, let's bring it in. Oh, they already submitted, didn't they? I think it was too late. Yeah, it's too late. Yo, JJ, are, are you still there? Okay, let's mulligan the one lander. Mulligan the one lander. Keep that one. Throw away canopy and planes. See, they do have fetches. I knew it. Uh, so I I got that email from you, and I filled out the thing, but I didn't know what it was for. It was kind of vague. Well, what exactly did I sign up for? Was it to do the presentation again? What, was it like a, did I sign up to be a presenter? Uh, all right, let's throw out Archon of Amiria, I guess. Better use the mana. They're gonna need to give this thing unblockable. What's that rebound card that gives protection? Gonna have to have that right here. 
registered your content and gave me more info so when you get when you get nominated i can promote you properly oh so so you're basically sending that out to every mtg content creator huh so that they can like be included in the running i feel like you should just auto include everybody like without having to sign up anyone just include the whole mtg community Even if they're not there to know they won, at least it's it's fair game for all. They put in Creator Maker and another War and Instigator. Well, okay, let's go Stone Frog, and I think we're gonna go for Fire and Ice here because I want to start blasting dudes. Yeah, best personality? I don't know, because there's some pretty... There's people who are good with their commentary. I feel like I'm pretty boring, um, if I had to be honest with myself. I feel like I, I'm not goofy and wacky and outgoing enough, and I feel like the most wacky, outgoing person is, is Magic Aids, despite the fact that not everybody likes his humor. Um, he's still the most, like, himself than, than anybody in, in the community, I would say. He, he does what he wants to do and, and is being himself despite what people think. Why do they have Soren? This also cheats stuff out. What are they doing? Okay, they gotta have the biggest vampire ever, the biggest goblin ever, and the biggest uh, soldier ever. That's what they're doing, whatever it may be. All right, let me see that goblin Goliath. Goblin Goliath? No Goblin Goliath, okay. Uh, planes. Cheating. Sword. Equip sword. Go to combat. Attack their face. For three. Uh, let's kill the crater maker and draw a card. Coco is nice. Morophodon. Furries gotta stick together. Furries do stick together. There's sometimes a little bit of a. Uh, drama that pops up every once in a long while just like uh, jason Aphex drama because it got political what people should never bring politics into any community because it just causes arguments so that's what happened with jason Aphex. um but besides that there's never really been any drama i mean people still support the heck out of jason Aphex and his wife because they're amazing artists but like, in terms of the more hardcore, like, longer time furries, they really stopped following Jason Aphex. Oh, they got more fun out naming Goblin. Do they have, they didn't name Sliver. That's right, it's Cheatin' Tribal. Oh, 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 I see what they're doing. I see what they're doing. I see what they're doing. Because it's every creature type. So, War and Instigator, Soren, and Preeminent Captain, or whatever his name was, all cheat out Moravon. They named Boglin. And it's colorless, so I can't get in with my noble. Um, Alright. Burnt in Forge Tender, and we'll leave up Coco. Simple as that. Uh... So, so Soren's gonna be able to put counters on this. They got lucky top decking that. Being sick of politics. 
from a political stance. I still don't know what politics are. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I don't know what they are. I don't know what the definition of politics is. I would say, I would define politics as government stuff. That's it. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm gonna say government stuff. That's my final answer. Oh, does Skyclave Apparition deal with Morphon? I think it does. Oh, no, no, no. Four or less. Never mind. All right. Skyclave is going to eat Soren. Yeah, let's eat Soren. And we are going to go fetch a batter skull because we need to gain some life back. Block here and block here and chump here. Um, Path the Exile. I mean, I'm going to just do this now just to make sure it's gone. Thank you. Okay. I feel comfortable now. Hello. New Age Breed. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, or wait, Bread? Breed? And, uh, I think I didn't... Did I see your message on Discord? I, I'm pretty sure I did. All right, go to combat. Let's get in with this dude and this dude. And we'll just leave up the instant speed batter skull. Let's deal two damage to war and instigator just to make sure that everything's gone. And we drew a noble. Yeah, I think we got it at this point. It's over. Because Skyclave Apparition is nuts as some butts. Olivia Voldaren is a blast from the past. That card used to see play in Jund, but the Forge of Slot in Jund has shifted so many times over the years it was hunt master of the fells olivia um it, like questing beast at a time bloodbraid elf got unmanned and then all this crazy stuff um all right how can we get lethal right now if i swing all it's four five six okay they're, they're probably gonna end up if they chump germ say they chump germ Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only eight. All right, go to combat. Attack with Noble, Burnton, and Germ. Deal two to their face. Draw. Um... Ariok Champion, Mirren Crusader, Gain a Life. So Olivia can double hit my Skyclave. They can get a 3-3. Three, three. I think they're still super dead. I think we still got this. They don't have enough mana to gain control of anything. Like they can gain control of our Batter Skull if they had mana. Wait, why Olivia in a Morphon cheat out deck? That's what I'm wondering. Go to combat and just attack with all. I mean, yeah, they don't have Settle the Wreckage up. I don't see anything that deals with this. I'm just going to uh, swing on. I don't even care about thinking about it right now. I'm not fearing really anything. They're going to ping the Skyclave. And ping the Skyclave. Sure, they get a 3-3. Three, three. I gain a life. Thanks for the life gain, opponent. They can block Mirren Crusader and Germ and still die. Yep. Come on, opponent, it's over. <laughs> Do they have any tricks up their sleeve? Wait. Oh, that was a hard scoop right there. All right, GG, taken down. That was a really cool brew. I like the idea of it. I think there's still more practical ways you can go about it, though. Like, okay, for those who are wondering, the, the original Soren Morphon deck, 
go back on my channel and look up Soren Soren Sliver combo or something like that. Like Soren Morphon combo. I think it was Soren Sliver combo. Um, and then my buddy Bruce by the Magic Guy on Twitch, which you should go and check him out. Um, he took it upon himself to like play it and mess with it, and he put in board the Weatherlight, and that's a card I totally didn't see when I was brewing, um, or when I was messing around with the idea. Because somebody sent me the idea, like, s telling me that, hey, Soren combos a Morphon, and then I brewed on it. Um, but yeah, Board the Weatherlight is awesome, because it, it can dig 5 deep for either Soren or Morphon, and you need both of those for the combo. The deck is insane, the deck was awesome, and it really should have became a legit archetype, I swear. Like, it's it's one of the coolest decks I've ever played, and easily top 3 coolest decks i played in the channel. You should go and check it out. Hello everybody and welcome back to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we'd like to speed up the longest games in our videos to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD from last Monday. So we're speeding up the next two rounds today. This first one, uh, as speed up sessions usually go, was the longest one in the video by far. Um, I feel like we weren't playing slow, it was just our opponent, because at the end of it, we still had plenty of time on the clock, and they were, like, in the red. Um, so yeah, the, um, we see Izzy Charms and a bunch of looting, and we know that it's Hollow One, because we're seeing, well, obviously there's Hollow One right there, and, like, things like Goblin Lore and, you know, stuff of that nature. You could tell it was Hollow One. And I was certain that it was, uh, Storm Herald. Because nowadays, when you see an Is It Hollow One deck, it is... 100% of the time, Storm Herald. They use, like, Izzet Charms and, like, looting spells and stuff to ditch Eldrazi Conscription, and then they play Storm Herald to, like, reanimate the Eldrazi Conscription and pretty much one-shot your opponent. And sometimes they even splash into black for Unearth, just in case they were to loot away or mill over uh, a Storm Herald via something like Burning Inquiry or Goblin Lore. But that wasn't the case. I was expecting it this whole time, and I was fearing it. That's why I was playing so defensively and leaving up Settle the Wreckage. Um, not Settle the Wreckage, but, you know, um, I, I don't know what it was. I think it was Burnt and Force Chander could sacrifice and prevent the damage it would deal, so we'd take nothing, but we'd still get annihilated and lose our permanence. Um, but the, the thing that it was there, and, like, I was fearing it. But as it turns out, they didn't have it. The whole game went by. And, um, and then another thing that I was thinking is after seeing my Matic Channeler and all these spells, these looting spells, I was thinking, this is probably, is it Phoenix? You know, the, is it Arclight Phoenix decks back in the day that everyone played and it was everywhere and it's still all over Pioneer? Uh, I thought it was that, but it wasn't that either. It was literally just, is it Hollow One? And I was so confused because it's like, why just play Hollow One when you could play either Phoenix or Storm Herald or both? So... And also, for some reason, we didn't see Burning Inquiry in that first game, even though it went to, like, turn 100 or whatever. And, uh, like, they must have just all been on the bottom 10 cards of their library because they dug basically their entire library, and we didn't see Burning Inquiry. But in game two, we saw them. So it's weird. They, they just happened to be all on the bottom of that person's deck. I was like, why don't they have Burning Inquiry? I was saying it the whole time. Um, but, yeah, we took that first one down because they were, like... They're, I mean, it sounds weird saying it, but their their list was pretty janky. It felt like it was missing literally the essential parts of what their deck is supposed to be. Uh, like, I feel like a broken record saying it again, but yeah, Storm Herald or, or Phoenix. They had the Flame White Phoenix because that's a stable of Hollow One, um, but it could definitely use some more pieces. And they even had Street Wraith uh, to just discard even more to make that Street Wraith or Hollow One cheaper, which I haven't seen in a minute since the Hollow One decks became a thing originally. Um, but yeah, we took them down because they, they alpha'd like that. They swung with a bunch of fatties, but I had settled the wreckage. And they didn't have a counter spell. So I just completely ate their whole board and they just scooped it up. All right, well, we're going on to the last game of the video. This one was shorter, for sure. And this one was a flood game. And I, I know I usually don't like to include flood and screw games in videos because it's, like, uninteresting and we don't really get to play our deck. But this one was a little bit different. We got flooded because the opponent made us flooded. They... As you might have seen in the beginning of that match right there, they Inquisition and then double thought seized us. So they literally took every single non-land card out of our hand and we were left with only lands and we continued to draw only lands until we hit that Mirror Crusader, but it was way too late at that point. So we ran into three copies of my most hated thing in modern, which is hand disruption. I hate it so much. So another good thing I speed up this game so that you guys don't get to see me get salty. 
Um, but yeah, game number two, they just end up controlling us out with like a bunch of removal and they got the like the nuts just like Stoneforge into removal, Bitter Blossom, and then they already have the Batter Skull out there and they're just denying all my resources and I can't win with just this Mirren Crusader. I tried to equip a sword, which is pretty good, but it's a little bit too late for that. So they end up taking us down. So GG to Black White Stoneblade. I really like that deck. Let's go on to the wrap up. So we ended up with four total wins. And this deck was really good at countering what the meta threw at us. I forgot. Did we lose? I forgot what, what if we lost, I forgot what it was too. <laughs> I honestly forgot what it was too. Um, but I really don't see a weakness. Being a modern player for, I've been playing modern for about six years now. And so I feel like I can evaluate decks pretty well. And looking at this deck, I would say that it's one weakness. I'd say, aside from this one weakness, I don't think it has any weak spots, but I think that the curve is the one thing. I would say to add a couple Birds of Paradise somewhere in here. Like, I, okay, maybe, like, Burned in Force Hunter is great, a great meta call, I understand, but Ariok Champion is just better. And will overall be better against more things and gain you more life. So I would just go up to the fourth Ariok, take out the Burntons, and find a way to put two birds. Because we really want turn one and two plays. If, like, this deck, like, the curve it has, it has a chance of just not having a turn one or two play. And at that point, it gets really, like, weak in modern. And, like, has, like, because people do stuff in one and two. To your turn one and two those are the modern turns people do stuff a lot of stuff on the first couple turns and you have to be able to keep up and do stuff yourself and if you can't then you're screwed you can still stabilize don't get me wrong like you got paths and skyclave apparitions but you're a lot slower so that's the one thing i would say aside from that i see no weaknesses the deck was had answers for almost everything it was awesome and i have no problems with it archon of Amiria performed okay I honestly thought this was a way better card than it seems, although I love the implications that players can only cast one spell per turn, so it gives you a main deck way to beat Storm, which there's not even that much Storm anymore, but still, having the option there is great. And what these kinds of green-white decks lacked is a like main deck Storm answer besides Thalia, and the Storm decks beat Thalia all the time. They would just like end a turn, bounce it, and then continue to Storm off, which they can still do with Archon. But the fact that we can still sideboard and stuff is cool, like Damping Sphere, and I guess that's it. So the deck doesn't have the most Storm hate in the world, but Archon is fine. So I, I, I definitely like Archon, and I think it's a, a really great Coco target. And I, I love playing Aether Vile Militia Bugler decks, and Archon of Amiria is something that Militia Bugler can find, which is another thing that I really like. Because Bugler can also find Knight, despite it can be a 4 power guy can find the Archon too, can find anything in this deck, Stoneforges, and so I think the Aether Vile Militia Bugler decks are just probably really good right now. So that's what I got to say about that. Because if you got Militia Bugler and Coco, you just got non-stop value. Value Town for days, in addition to hating out, you can even find the Mirren Crusader too, despite it's still attacking for four, you can find another Bugler, it only searches for two. See, so much corners are cutting here. And the Bugler can also find the Skyclave Apparition. This feels like right up the alley for a Militia Bugler. Anyways, I definitely recommend trying it out if you like these kinds of mid-range decks, but I would definitely do those little changes that I talked about. Put in the fourth Aria, cut the burnt ins, find a way to put two birds. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest the gameplay every other day. We upload our gameplay every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we do a lot of modern content and we're messing around with a lot of Zendikar Rising cards. So if that's the kind of thing, you've come to the right place. And if you want to check out the social media, the links are down below. The link to Twitter is there and the link to Twitch is there as well if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream our Magic the Gathering gameplay all day long on Mondays. We stream variety through the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday, if you want to come out and see some other games. And if you want to try today's deck out for yourself, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below. Using the code Marin Moon, save 15% off, and you can run today's deck and play along with us. And if you want to try today's deck out on paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That's our TCG player link. And anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. It is the number one place on the internet to buy Magic the Gathering singles. And shout outs to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. I appreciate you guys every single day. 
And if you would like to support the channel further and become a patron as well, the link to that is, of course, down below in the description. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.